हेलो एवरीवन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वन मोर टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू जनरल फार्मेकोलॉजी दैट इज रैशनल यूज ऑफ मेडिसिन नाउ वी एज अ प्रिस्क्राइबर और एज अ डॉक्टर हैज अ प्रिवेलेज टू प्रिस्क्राइब डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ड्रग्स बट देर आर चांसेस दैट फ्यू डॉक्टर्स प्रोड्यूसिंग सम ऑफ द एरर्स और इंटेंशनली प्रिस्क्राइब you know some of the medicines which are actually not needed or because of negligence prescribing uh, unnecessary doses prescribing unnecessary drugs itself uh, so these all kind of things are actually called as irrational prescribing so this topic is all about rational ethical ideal prescriptions so who has uh, taken this that thing seriously and uh, on that rationality they have given a definition that rational use of medicine requires few of the aspect that whatever medicine you are prescribing it should be appropriate to the clinical needs the doses should meet the individual requirement the medicine should be prescribed for adequate period of time and important thing is the cost cost is the main important thing which patient and a community can afford so there are different aspects of prescribing on what basis as a prescriber as a doctor you should prescribe drug and that is called as rational prescription of medicines so what this rational prescription means you should prescribe medicines according to appropriate indications so there should be an appropriate indication in a patient to prescribe that medicines whatever medicines or a drug you are prescribing should be efficacious tolerable safe and suitable to the patients because all these things varies according to patients so you need to make clinical judgment by examining the patients and then you need to prescribe or choose the medicines it should be an appropriate dose route and durations because all these things as we have seen affects the response of a drug so you need to be precise in that appropriate patients as all these things are different in different patients because patients might be having different cofactors or comorbidities so it should be according to appropriate patients correct dispensing and appropriate instructions you know many a time prescribers don't have a time to you know uh, make patient understand how to use the medicines for for an example some meter dose inhaler we will see in practical aspects those meter dose inhalers or in layman language they call it as pump for respiratory diseases patients don't know how to use it and that is why they becomes ineffective or they won't get response so doctor should spare a time to make patient you know understand about the specific formulation of drug and there should be adequate monitoring about if the patient is taking it or not so adherence or the compliance uh doctor need to check now what are the irrationalities in prescription so opposite to the rationality that is irrationality so what are irrationality in prescribing sometimes doctor prescribe the drugs which is actually not needed for an examples vitamins tonic actually all these medications are not needed in patients and still they are prescribing so that is irrational prescribing use of drugs not related to diagnosis sometimes in viral infections they treat the patients with antibiotic drugs so it is not related to diagnosis it is actually a viral infections and you are prescribing antibacterial so that is irrational prescribing selection of a wrong drug that is negligence depending on the patient you should be having that clinical knowledge and a skill to prescribe that drug but if you are not prescribing or if you are prescribing wrong drug that is negligence or irrationalities prescribing ineffective and doubtful efficacy of drugs you know because sometimes pharma companies provide that kind of uh, uh, positive things or uh, you can say some of the offers that doctors get strapped into it and they prescribe eventually ineffective and doubtful efficacy of drugs or sometimes doctor might not have any enough knowledge about that drug and on the pressure of medical representatives they prescribe that kind of things so that is ineffective or doubtful efficacy drug prescriptions incorrect route of administrations you don't know about the route through which you are prescribing so you end up with faulty route 
incorrect dose you are prescribing, incorrect durations, unnecessary use of drug combinations. We already seen in our last topic that is fix those combinations. Uh, you know, you are prescribing those combinations which are actually not needed. So this kind of unnecessary use of combination is also comes under irrational prescribing. And unnecessary use of expensive medicines yeah, and the cheaper drugs are equally effective. When cheaper drugs are still effective, why you are going for expensive medicines? Because sometimes some doctors comes into the you know offers of pharmaceutical companies and doing this. So that is called as irrational prescribing. What happens due to all these things? Eventually, uh, what, what are the sufferings that patient is having or even we indirectly get? That is impact of irrational prescribing, the delay and inability in affording the relief. Sometimes the relief gets delayed, the response gets delayed and because of that cure of the disease gets delayed and we sometimes don't get the cure of the disease. More chances of side effects or adverse drug reactions because sometimes you are prescribing doubtful efficacy drugs end up with side effects or adverse drug reactions. It prolongs the hospitalization stays and indirectly affects the patients and loss of mandates, all the productive things gets lost. He financially, he comes under burden. High chances of morbidity, suffering and mortality, death also sometimes. Very important there is antimicrobial resistant. Our government is uh, always trying to, you know, uh, aware about these things that antimicrobial resistance is a major thing in a burning issue in our country because of this irrational prescription of antibiotic. Many a time in viral diseases antibiotics been prescribed and eventually of all these antibiotics end up with antimicrobial resistance. Sometimes doctor or even patients do not complete the full course of those antibiotics and end up with antimicrobial resistance. And on that antimicrobial resistance, other antibiotics are not being developed on the same pace. It takes years and years to develop a single antimicrobial drugs. So this is a warning sign and this is very uh, alarming thing to all the doctors and even all the uh, communities and the patients that antimicrobial resistance is a major issue and we need to get aware about that. Because of irrational prescribing, there is a financial loss to the patient, to the community and eventually it will indirectly hurt doctors only because there would be loss of patient's confidence into the doctor and it will decrease his practice and reputations. Health standard will get lowered of the patients and community. So how to improve this rational prescribing now other question is how we can improve this rational prescribing. So there are few drugs we can also call as these are the steps or a few steps sorry uh, which can improve the rational prescribing. These are steps of selecting P drugs as well. In practical we would be having a uh, lecture about P drugs and that also basically following the same concept of rational prescribing. So it's a P drugs selecting P drugs or selecting rational drugs having different step. What are these steps? So first you establish a diagnosis that or at least a provisional diagnosis right in, in, in a particular case. Then you define a therapeutic problem that what is the problem and you are aiming to solve the problem of patients for an example whether you are uh, going to reduce the pain of a patient or treating the infections or not. Then define the therapeutic goal to be achieved what goal you want to achieve like relief of the symptoms, you want to cure, prevent the complications, you want to cure the patients. So define the therapeutic goal. Then choose the appropriate drug class. That is the first process. Choose the appropriate drug class because there are uh, many classes or options are available of different class of drugs for the same indications. So first you choose a particular class according to patient's conditions. And then you try and identify a single drug from that class based on four things. How efficacious that drug is, how safe that drug is, how suitable is that drug into the patients and whether it is having a balance in cost as well. So these are the four factors on what basis you select individual drugs. So these are different steps. Define diagnosis, therapeutic problems, decide goals, then select class of drugs. And then from those five, four or six or different 
uh, number of drugs from a same class you choose one medicine according to efficacy safety suitability and cost then the implication aspect comes now you have choose the drug now choose the route by which you want to give depending upon the condition of patient whether it is an emergency obviously go for some parental routes whether it is non emergency you can go for oral routes in what doses it would be effective for what duration considering the patient's condition so choosing right route in right dosage and for right durations instruct the patient and give proper information about the use of that medicines and compliance that you need to adhere to that drug and only change according to doctor's advice monitor the extent to which the goal is achieved now you go for follow ups for an example if you have prescribed drugs for blood pressure now you follow up the patients and see how effective that drug is and whether their drug responds or not modify the drugs if needed if it's not responding according to your expectations you can modify or change the drugs and monitor any other adverse drug reactions or side effects if patient is getting so this is how an ideal way a doctor should go for rational prescribing and this will eventually decrease the healthcare burden of the society so this rational prescribing eventually involves balancing between risk and benefit and also consider other factors like cost and convenience so i hope you understand about this rational prescribing one more thing we need to understand and that easy to understand is expiry date of pharmaceutical products as we can as we already you know discuss and you can see on all the pharmaceutical products that expiry date is been printed so what is the shelf life shelf life is a time period between manufacturing date and expiry date so both the dates been pre printed on the label of uh, uh, any pharmaceutical product on that basis you can decide the shelf life of that product why it is important the shelf life because after expiry date there are chances that drugs may get damaged or get altered physically or pharmacologically as well sometimes this altered drug produces different pharmacological response that may be in a negative side and produces adverse drug reactions or a toxicity and the best example is fanconi syndrome when you use outdated tetracycline tetracyclines are antibiotic medications and when you use those outdated tetracyclines or tetracyclines use after the expiry date they produces tremendous kidney damage the kidney tubules get damaged and uh, that leads into the patients of tubular necrosis and kidney failure so this is a very serious thing that can happen with outdated tetracycline and very relevant uh, uh, example with the self life so hope you understand today's discussions if you are having any doubts you can comment in the comment sections and if you like this video you can you know like share and subscribe we are having a session about all the pharmacological lectures and we'll go through to all the pharma lectures a to z uh and if you are still not subscribed to this channel you can subscribe to this channel uh, every week two or three videos we are continuously uploading and if you are having any doubts comment in the comment box thank you very much